Morning everyone, I hope we're doing well. Um, let's have a look at our learning for today and I hope you've enjoyed um, the learning so far this week. So again we're going to carry on with our reading and we're going to be looking at summarising today. Quite a new skill, we're not, we don't do huge amounts of this in reading but uh, a really important skill uh, nevertheless. So these are some of the summarising questions that you could get and the, that one at the beginning is a, a classic can you number these events one to five in order that they happen so that could be over the book, over a chapter or just over a page and you could just be asked to summarise you know, the, the base, take the basic idea of what happened in a chapter or a uh, particular page and a good example of a summary is potentially the blurb of a book so when you read the back of it it tells you a little bit about the book obviously it doesn't give away what actually happens that would spoil it but uh, it does sort of summarize very very briefly what happens in that text so you, you can know if you're going to enjoy it or not so let's have a look at um, some of these questions so if you pause the video now and read through this text, we'll have a look at the question that we're going to have a go at in a second. So the first question that we're going to have a look at is, which of the following statements best summarises Charlie Brooke? Tick one. So first one, a professional athlete with many friends, a mythical figure akin to Hercules, that means similar to, a compassionate athlete, schoolmate, a teacher at the local village school. So if we start to highlight the key information, so summarising basically who Charlie Brooke is, well it does tell us that he was a very good athlete, all um, good at football, cricket, gymnastics and swimming because uh, of his strength. And if we find this piece of evidence here, it says Charlie never seemed to be as happy as when he was assisting someone. So com that word compassionate does mean that you like to help people. And we know that he was a good athlete. So it's got to be, our answer must be that, a compassionate and athletic schoolmate. That's got to be uh, our answer for that one. Let's look at another example then. Same text. And this time, um, slightly different question, but again, summary skills. The chapter this extract is taken from is called Charlie Brook. Based on what you've read so far, write a new title for this chapter. So if we look at what the text covers as a whole, it begins to introduce Charlie. We learn about him when he was young and it then goes into explaining who he was so in terms of my idea for this one i would probably call this chapter introducing charlie or maybe even because it talks about him being at school it could be um the early life of charlie if this was sort of in the style of a biography so you'll have some summary questions on our lemony stick it text have a go at those. Um, there's only a couple, um, but just try and be as detailed as you can. So it's really important that you've read the chapter eight in the text before obviously answering these questions. On to our maths then, and we're going to continue with our decimals, uh, but today we're going to be looking at dividing decimals by 10, 100 and 1000. So, again, we're going to be using our place value chart. It's really important. And same question as we, similar question that we had yesterday. Why do teachers keep saying you can't just take away a zero when you divide by 10? Well, again, we talked about the fact that because the, we're looking at decimals now, that causes a problem. You can't just do that, which is why it's really important that we learn this skill today of using that place value chart. So let's look at the first example. We've got 26 divided by 10. So we're going to put our 26 into our place value chart. OK, 
Okay, so two tens, six units. And we're going to now divide by 10. So very similar to when we're multiplying, the, the one zero of the 10 indicates that we are going to be shifting the digits one place. But this time, because we're dividing and the number's going to get smaller, we're going to go to the right of the place value chart because that is where our um, smaller columns lie. Don't forget, each um, if you move one place to the right in your place value chart, it is going to be 10 times smaller because um, the difference between the size difference between your place value charts uh, is 10 times smaller. Okay? So let's have a go at shifting the digits one place to the right. We're going to move that six into the tenths, and that two is going to go into our units. So our answer for this one will be 2.6. Let's look at another example. So a bigger number this time, we've got 2,675, and we're going to divide by 100 this time. So put our original number into our place value chart and we're going to be dividing by 100 so we're going to be shifting the digits two places this time because 100's got two zeros to the right so move our five and it's going to go there again i've not done the arrows this time to um, avoid confusion and it looking messy our Six will be now in our units, and our thousand is going to move into our ten. So it'll be twenty six point seven five. You can see that every one of our digits haven't moved apart from each other, and they've moved two places to the right. Okay, and final one then. Now, chosen this one because obviously this one is going to create a slight problem so you see that towards the end so as before nothing different just put our 395 in our place value chart and we're going to be moving th three places to the right this time because we're dividing by a thousand so if we start moving our five are going to move to there counting them along we're going to have our nine in there and our three there now you can see that We've got no other digits to move, and we've got nothing in our units column. But we need to have something in our units column. So we need our placeholder this time, and we need to put our zero in. So it would be 0 0.395 will be our answer for this one. Okay, so have a go at those in your packs. Remember, draw out a place value chart in your uh, books first, and just have an experiment with... Uh, moving them around. Okay, don't forget to keep going with those times table rock stars and remember to keep looking out for those battles that might come up. On to our writing then, and again we're going to be focusing on grammar and punctuation. And in particular today we're looking at commas for clarity. Now this is a slightly new uh, topic so it's really important if you look at the video that I've put, I've the link in there for uh, a video that explains this uh, from the very beginning. So it's really important that you've checked that video out before you have having a go at the activities and particularly uh, for the next few slides in this video. So have a look at that if you haven't already done so. Okay, so let's just start us off. Let's just check that we are able to use commas correctly. Now, you've got the same sentence four times, but obviously we've got different positions of commas each time. So if we straight away, I can begin to see that we've got a relative clause here. We've got who played tennis for the school. So in our first one, you see there's our highlighted relative clause. In the first one you can see they've got a, a, a full stop sorry, after school which doesn't seem right because that would need to have a comma after it and I think we're missing a comma after Nigel so 
we would not be ticking the first one. Same relative clause underlined there. We've got one after Nigel, but nothing after school, so that one wouldn't be correct. And if we look at the bottom one, you can see they've got that. We've got no comma after Nigel, and we've got one after tennis, which again isn't in the right place at all. If you read it and pause, it doesn't make sense. So our answer for this one would have to be the third one. Because we can see that we've got a comma after Nigel, that separates our relative clause, and we've just got our commas there to separate our list of activities that he enjoys doing. Okay, so moving on to our commas for clarity. Question for this one is tick the things that Jason loves according to this sentence. So the sentence says, a keen handyman, Jason loves digging, sanding, fixing boats and cars. So our options are just fixing. Well, it's not just fixing because if it was just fixing, we need another comma after fixing and between boats. So can't just be um, fixing. Now, it's not fixing boats and cars because it only says he likes fixing boats. He just likes cars. So our answer for this one would be fixing boats. Okay, so our answer, fixing boats, it's not that he likes fixing boats and cars, he just likes cars and he likes to mend boats. Okay, so let's love, have a look at uh, this trickier one then. So, true or false, according to the sentence, the children were amazing at art. So if you pause the video and have a go and see if you think this would be true or false, read it carefully and pause on the commas. Okay, so for this one, if we read this through carefully, pausing on the commas, after the lesson on Monday, the children, declared the teachers, were amazing at art. So we can sort of begin to see that it's the teachers are actually saying that the children were amazing at art. So for this one, yeah, we would say that that would be true. Now let's have a look at a different example. So we're going to have to we're going to use the same one as before, but change the meaning of the sentence by altering the commas in this one. So if we put our sentence as it was above, and actually if we take away that comma after children, then what's happening now is completely different. In the top sentence, you can see as we said before. The teacher said the children were amazing at art, but in the second one, without that comma, it actually says the children said the teachers were good at art. So the children think the teachers in the second one now are amazing at art. So it changes the meaning completely with just that comma missing. Okay, and let's have a look at this example. So this is often a question that might come up in terms of these commas for uh, clarity and like we did on the previous example how does it change uh, the meaning of the sentence so really good way of starting an answer for these would be in the first sentence in the second sentence so use them sentence openers to have a go. So if you pause the video now, have a go, we'll have a look at the questions, uh, sorry, the answers in a second. Okay, so let's read the first one sentence and then we'll read the answer to it. So in today's lesson, we're going to learn how to draw children, the teacher remarked. And the second one it says, in today's lesson, we're going to learn how to draw children, the teacher remarked. Okay, so yeah, in the first one, the teacher is just teaching the children to draw. Just generally, we don't know what they're going to learn to draw, but they're just going to learn to draw. And in the second one, um, the teacher is 
telling somebody in the class that they're going to be a, they're going to be drawing children. So again, completely changes the meaning of that sentence. So in your packs, have a go at those. Um, don't worry if you get stuck; it is um, quite tricky, but just give it a go. And again, if you haven't watched that video that introduced it in the pack, uh, please have a look at that before you start.